Something very scary has just happened for the crypto markets. And I don't want to be that guy to alarm everybody, but Jim Cramer, all right, which is one of the best inverse indicators, has just popped. He just said an hour ago that he reiterates that there is a bull market. So guys, sell everything. That's exactly this guy. So for anybody that does not know, Jim Cramer, a very well-known analyst or TV trader. He is just almost always wrong. And I actually want to prove that to you guys. If, just for fun, right, we take a look at Bitcoin's price. The reason that the price went up right here is because we all got excited. Now, over what, you might ask? Oh, let's take a little bit of a look at my Twitter. I already posted for you guys that Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell uh, had a little bit of a speech at 6.40 p.m. Central Eastern Time, and I don't know for what time zone that is for you guys, whatever. Anyway, he gave a speech in which he said they're going to basically significantly take the inflation down throughout 2023, which was a very bullish statement. Everybody got excited, and when that news came out, prices started to rocket. That was basically at the end, again, at the... Uh, at the end of the 6 p.m.s, basically, because that's when he gave his speech. Marcus just started pumping. Now, let's again take a little bit of a look again at Mr. Uh, Mr. Jim Cramer. Right at the end, end, end of the sixes, he came out to say, you know what? It's a bull market. Let's freaking go. And exactly throughout the next hour, <laughs> you know, we decided to fall all the way down about 2.5% or so on Bitcoin. That is just kind of funny. Anyway. As I just said, couple of pieces of bullish news, right? This is this is very very good to see. Um, obviously, Jim Cramer's stuff is not so good. Again, I already covered before a little while ago. Yesterday, actually, he said a recession will happen no matter what. Right now, he says it's a bull market. Let's just kind of uh, how do you say it? Like ignore this guy and and go on with our lives, knowing that he'll be wrong most of the time and is just following the flow. I already predicted yesterday as well that the moment that we are back at crazy all-time highs, Jim Cramer is going to be that guy who says, ha, huh, I'm so happy that I bought Bitcoin low. And I'm so happy that I told you guys to buy crypto early. That type of shenanigans. I can just expect, I can just predict that that's all going to come forward over the next couple of months as crypto start to rise. Which brings me to the point, guys, right now, if we're taking a look at the crypto market, it really looks, and you can't convince me otherwise, that we have really hit our bottom a couple of months ago already. Realistically, when looking back at Bitcoin's price over the last five years or so, what we're seeing is every single time it touches this trend line, it takes a couple hundred days sure but we get some crazy percentage returns it's happened this way for years and years and years every single time that we touch that trend line we get a crazy spike afterwards and that's exactly what we seem to be finding here again we touch the trend line boom go up about a thousand percent in the next uh, 160 days then we touch the trend line again and we go up roughly 350 percent in the next 200 days we touch the trend line we go up at least 1100 percent in the next 400 days right now we've touched the trend line a little bit ago right now we're facing some resistance at the 200 weekly moving average or slightly below it which again just looking at it from this perspective it does indeed seem like we might see another slight retest of the line at potentially like you know eighteen thousand dollars or so which again i don't expect but it could happen uh before just continuing on to go towards the bullish side and potentially get i just took a little bit of an average here you know 500 600 700 percent gains or so which would lead to about a hundred thousand dollars per bitcoin over the next couple hundred days again just taking some averages this could be somewhere at the end or middle of 2023 or if we're following halving cycles we have to kind of take some of these lines a little bit further uh, that would place it at probably somewhere in the middle of 2024 before we reach that crazy high level for bitcoin but i want you guys to realize this really really clearly right now it really doesn't have to take that long before bitcoin is back at 50 000, 60 70 000 or so because you're going to see many of these crazy plus 80%, plus 45%, plus 35% days or so. And it's hard to imagine now because it's been months and months and months of just decline. Again, the crypto market started to fall all the way back in November of 2021, right? It's been an extremely long amount of time. And many people can't fathom that it's been like 500 days since they uh, saw these gains. And specifically, the gains were happening in 2020 throughout right after we already hit here like sixty five thousand dollars or so we really didn't move that much for another 
let's say three quarters of a year. It was mostly this run up from March 2020 all the way up to April of 2021. So from that point on forward, it's basically been like uh, six, 700 days almost since we saw those levels, almost two years since we saw crazy gains. So people are just not used to it right now anymore. But I keep saying over on Twitter, the good will persevere. Or in other words, just keep it up. Just be patient and trust the process. That's one thing I've been telling all my people over on Twitter, Telegram, etc. If you trust the process, there's a very small chance, in my own opinion, that it's not going to work out if we extrapolate to a couple of months. I keep telling people this, but I, <laughs> it's just my thoughts on the matter. Anyway, if we take a look at Ethereum right now as well. We covered yesterday there might be a slight little trade potential, and we actually could have taken advantage of that already in the Telegram, specifically because we noticed something. Hey, there's a little bit of a pattern showcasing we've covered a thousand times before, probably going to pump, which it did slightly. Anyway, there's also some quickly got rid of the ad blocker. There's some news on Ethereum, some new data that came out that I thought was quite interesting. Data reveals that the top two Ethereum wallets are scammers. Scammers are apparently in the lead. That's basically what they're saying. The scammers wallets have become the top two gas spending wallets at a time when Ethereum gas prices are lowest since the 2021 uh, bull run, which I already think is pretty crazy. But again, for those that do not understand, the top two Ethereum gas spenders that keep the Ethereum network running most of the time, right, are apparently scammers, right? That's pretty crazy. According to recent findings by PexShield, the top two Ethereum gas spenders on the ETH network are scammers wallets with zero transfers. Now, how exactly that's supposed to come along? Zero wallets, top spenders, mm. but apparently they're doing this. Look, in an era of low guy gas or gas fees, even though... For token transfers right now, it's still pretty high in my opinion. Anyway, scammers wallets are using embedded network features to trick innocent users into interacting with them, believing they are real wallets. And yeah, apparently uh, that's costing them a lot of Ethereum. You know, it's costing them a lot of money, a lot of gas. Uh, but probably it's, it's working for them because they're spending a lot, but they're most likely also scamming a lot of money. Sad to hear, but very important to update yourselves upon. Also, you have to understand this. Most of the time, whenever there's a Powell speech or a... Federal Reserve type of speech of, of, of this magnitude, you have to understand, most of the time, the crypto market moves because of it. So I just want you guys to realize that if you're not taking advantage of this by trading it, that you're doing that elaborately, or I should say deliberately. We trade over on Bybit, and there's always a link down below for that. You can see it right there, right there, is just the crypto exchange that I personally use. And again, I will leave a link for that in the description down below. You can get some crazy bonuses for trading on there. So just check it out. And once you've made an account, go to the rewards hub and everything will showcase itself. To get back to it though, what I meant with taking advantage of these moves, what I meant with that is, well, almost every single time that Jerome Powell gives a speech, there is some crazy volatility. And in this case here, the majority of us expected it to be bullish, getting a little bit of a pump to most markets, and it happened. And the same thing can sometimes be said about the FOMC, albeit that in those type of events, it's like a, hmm, could very well be bullish if it just goes along with the expectation, but there could be a crazy amount of volatility just prior and during and whatnot. With these types of speeches, it's a little bit more set in stone because, well, they just set a new, completely new policy and right now he's going to elaborate, most likely to kind of redeem some of the negativity that he said it before or, or kind of brought into the market before. So it's more like logical to deduce the movement. With the FOMC meetings and whatnot, it's still a little bit of a guesstimate as to what number is going to come out, except for, for the last meeting. Anyway, on a completely different front, take a look at this. The ex-Ripple CTO's firm for content micro-tipping coil, which hopefully you guys all know, is apparently winding down. And here's what it means for XRP ecosystem. Well, I never used it anyway. I don't really care too much. It's sad to see it go, I guess, because it used to be such a big deal. The reason I'd say that this is probably actually a pretty good thing instead of bad is because, well, the venture didn't work out that well, apparently, which is why they stopped it, right? It makes a little bit of sense as well, but it's mostly because they got granted a billion XRP to potentially use to grow the platform, uh, mostly from Ripple. And now that they've left and they probably only used a couple million dollars, well, they got themselves a lot of room, we're talking about Ripple then, to redistribute this to other parties, which might be able to actually advance the XRP ecosystem further. So this might actually, for XRP or the XP Ledger, be an extremely good or profitable thing if you're involved with the ecosystem. 
And on a last little side note, I just wanted to quickly make this clear. Today is again one of those days where I decided to buy my bags full. I've done this on a multitude of different occasions and I always share that with you guys. I buy crypto every single day. Not a day goes by that I do not buy crypto. But there are some days, and this is mostly how it works. I transfer to my ledger from MetaMask and whatnot every so often, right? On those days, however, it could be that I have some tether left from some 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 uh, swaps that I've done before or some Ethereum, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I usually am like, okay, let's rebalance my portfolio. I look at the numbers, see exactly how much XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, yada, yada, yada I have. And I start to rebalance and just buy a lot of extra crypto from stable coins because it's just one of those days where I feel like it. Again, two different things. I buy crypto every single day, which again, I've done today, but I also extra on top bought another good chunk of crypto today which is not based upon timings not based upon markets at all again as i've said before we can indeed get a lot of uh, a little bit of a drawdown again for the bitcoin price sorry for not showing it perfectly there we go uh before moving back upwards but and i need to express this to you guys as well it's not going to matter too much in the grand scheme of things because the general direction for ethereum for bitcoin anything sorry here's the bitcoin chart is is upwards albeit a slight correction first right could happen maybe we go down 30 percent first uh, but the journey upwards is just going to be beautiful regardless. And maybe, just maybe, just maybe, I don't get the maximum amount of profit by, uh, for buying at 18000 rather than like 22.5 or something like that. But in my opinion, it's worth it to take that risk. I'd rather just have a little bit of a higher priced Bitcoin than not having the Bitcoin or Ethereum or XRP or whatever at all. And that's my philosophy about it. But yeah, that was it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you press the like button. And I'll be back tomorrow with another crypto update. So make sure you turn the notification bell on. Very important. See you guys again in another one.